everybody does self-help videos those are so annoying they're so dumb so i'm gonna do one let's talk about top 10 things that i think you could probably do to improve your life just my suggestions things that i did that helped me may not help you you might not want to do this that's up to you but these are in no specific order so it doesn't really make sense i guess it's not a top 10 it's just 10 <laughs> 10 things to do that could help you improve your life first and foremost Everybody in this country, especially I'm to be the U.S. or the West, they are not eating real food. I mean, this is probably the biggest thing. This is like the biggest killer of people, I think, in our country. And it's intentionally that way. It's part of how the corporate structure is set up to convince you of eating synthetic things, things that are not real food. And that's what I think is the main contributor to why somebody, so many people are so unhealthy. So as beautiful Tristana always says, don't eat anything with cartoon characters on it, right? And you want to be eating things that are real foods, not processed, uh, not made with seed oils, not part of some big mega conglomerate, uh, not part of big pharma, not part of anything um, related to high fructose corn syrup. Other things that people do that they think are food, like fast food, also that needs to go, right? Biggest in this arena, soda, Cokes, Pepsis, all that stuff. That is just pure death juice, man. Get rid of that. You need to stop drinking all that right away. And a lot of people are addicted to those things. And the easiest way to stop that addiction, people say, is to start drinking things like Perrier. And that will wean you off of the sort of addiction that you might have just to the your palate being tickled by the bubbles don't do this right anymore start winning yourself off of that totally get rid of cokes there's no reason at all to drink high fructose coke syrup i mean it's just not first of all it's, it's not even it doesn't taste good it's just all mad science creation made in a lab stuff none of that is real food I would say um, avoid the things that the big corporations, the Fortune 100, push on you, right? Beyond Meat, fake meat, all that kind of stuff, soy type stuff. None of that. Get all of that out of your diet. And in, in my case, what happened for me was I actually needed like a straight up meat diet, right? In the vein of uh, Michaela Peterson, Jordan Peterson type problems, right? So that worked for me. I'm not saying you have to do that, but I definitely think that if you want to move in the direction of healthy, you first of all at least want to be completely organic. Next, you want to have a, a heavy meat carnivore based diet as much as you can. Um, maybe that's not what you have to do. Maybe you want to do just keto. Maybe you just want to do um, something that's paleo, but that's what I would recommend. Next, I would say. Uh, your environment is important in this in this regard too, in terms of diet. So, get yourself away from toxic products, disgusting cleaning products. Like now, I've been so divorced from that stuff for so many years. If I get near the smell of any of these kinds of things, like bleach, ammonia, you know, hardcore cleaning stuff, it makes me I feel sick, right? So I start getting nauseous, and that what that tells me is that that stuff is highly toxic, right? Because if you're used to it you don't feel that 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 it's affecting you in that way right because you're acclimatized to it but if you remove yourself from that environment you can feel the effects of that even more and sometimes it's just immediate nausea um, i would say that anything re relating to uh big pharma pills these kinds of things i mean there might be situations where you know you have you can make that decision with your doctor that's not for me to tell you but in my view, my opinion is that I don't think that the, the big drug pushers um, are out there for our health. Personally, I would try to avoid pills. Uh, I would say that you want to have uh, a regular sleep pattern. Right? This is really affecting people. They, they can't get to sleep. They stay up way too late. And they miss the important daylight hour exposures that they need. In other words, we're made to actually be in sunlight. So we need a, a, a significant amount of sunlight, I think. In fact, I even started, I stopped wearing sunglasses years ago because I, I looked into the fact that I, our eyes actually need sunlight. I think we need that experience as part of uh, what we were made to have. Um, I think that we need to be outside, not all day, but you know, significant amounts of time throughout the day if we can. So those are the important uh, health things that I think most people, especially in the U.S., need to immediately change, right? Just completely cut out all of the garbage and 
especially even if you're going out to eat, right? That's not always totally bad. The problem is that a lot of restaurants use these big uh, corporations, Cisco and whatnot, to buy seed oils. And they cook everything in these seed oils. And a lot of the food is GMO as well. So you want to try to stay away from all that stuff as best you can. Next, I would say in terms of money, number two, uh, money is difficult because obviously inflation, we, we live on a, a debt-based fiat system. So what you want to do is, yeah, you're going to have to use and have cash. But I, I really do believe in the value of Bitcoin, especially other cryptos are more risky. They're all risky. They're all volatile. But I would recommend having Bitcoin, especially uh, as an investment. Um, I would say other obvious investments, if you can move into having land, having your own property. If you're paying rent, you're just throwing away money every month. Right. So it's better to have land, which is an asset, houses, assets. Right. And those are assets that don't typically depreciate as much as something like a fancy car would, right? So I would say uh, look for that kind of a thing to invest in. Gold is a great thing to have. Silver is a great thing to have. Those are, are, are timeless metals that obviously are, are a more of a hedge against inflation than cash, obviously, or anything like that. But um, the best hedge against inflation is Bitcoin. So keep that in mind. Uh, but none of these are perfect. None of these are infallible. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't have some degree of cash on hand as well. Um, next, I would say that also part of the diet I forgot to mention is the tap water. I think you should avoid the tap water. If you look into various documentaries on that, you can see what's actually added. But I think it's really important to have water filters of various kinds for the tap, for whatever. But you need to make sure that it's the filters that actually filter the fluoride. Uh, fluoride is a very tiny particle and a lot of those filters don't get fluoride. Don't waste or blow money on things that you don't need, especially for example, partying. Uh, this was something that I spent a lot of money on in my 20s on alcohol. And looking back, I, I thought I, I realized the other day, man, if I'd taken all of that money that I spent on going to the bar and partying with my friends and actually put those thousands of dollars over the years into investments, right, I would have had a lot better uh, setting right for the future now uh, if I had used that money more wisely now I'm not saying you have to be crazy about it obviously everybody wants to go out and have fun so you can allow yourself to have fun but if you're more disciplined in the way that you save and use your money it'll be better off for you in the long run especially if you're younger right when you're younger you're a lot more apt to act upon the moment and not think about the future and that's something that I would caution against so as you go into the to uh, your 20s, 30s, 40s, the more that you can have saved and invested, the better. Um, but really what's important in this regard in terms of money, I would say, is to start thinking about having a business, it, especially if you're somebody with that entre entrepreneurial spirit, uh, somebody who's more independent, you want to be your own boss. And there's a lot of advantages to that. And we live in an era where it's a lot easier to do that via the internet. So typically the the, the best idea is to Take whatever you're most passionate about, whatever that is, and figure out a way to monetize that and make that into some kind of online business. Now, obviously, we can't predict the future in this arena either. We don't know if that will always be there. There's no perfect silver bullets for that either. But um, that potentiality, that possibility is still there, still real. And don't be hung up on your past failures or mistakes thinking that I can't do that. That's not something I could do. Most people can do this kind of a thing. It's just finding the right area where you're not going to be worn out or bored by focusing so much of your time on one thing because you are going to have to treat it like a job, right? So if you work in a job that you don't want, what you want to do is in your free time, start devoting more and more of your free time, almost like it will be a part-time job to the thing that you want to turn into a moneymaker, right? Probably your hobby. And I think it's kind of a normie book, but I read Malcolm Gladwell's thing many years ago. And his whole point was that it takes you about 10,000 hours before you master something. So if you put 10,000 hours into something and you've mastered it, you could probably think about ways to turn that into your business. And I would highly recommend doing that because when you're your own boss, your life will change. The way that you go about your life, the way that you think about your time will change. Time will become much more valuable to you. Not just your time, but you will appreciate time for everyone else, not wasting their time, right? So these are great steps into becoming a mature person 
who will gain respect from other people, right? And having your own business is a great way to do that. So I, I recommend trying to figure out ways that you could do that. That'd be a great aid to this uh, uh, monetary element here, number two. Relationships, number three. These, this is really difficult, obviously, in our day. But I would say that, uh, especially for young guys, I mean, that's most of my audience. I don't think there's a whole lot of <laughs> women watching my uh, videos. But especially for young guys, um, it's, a very, it's, it's crucial to learn social skills. Okay, so a lot of really intelligent people, uh, people who might be watching my channel, they might be a little more on the socially awkward side. They might be a little more on the reclusive, uh, bookish side of things. And so what you want to do is practice and cultivate social skills so that you're not as awkward as you probably are. And I'm, I'm an awkward, weirdo kind of guy as well. So it's okay. I get it. But there's a degree to which you want to overcome that. For example, public speaking, right? You want to be able to convey your ideas in a uh, clear way to an audience and not be afraid. And that's if you can get over that hurdle, that's a huge hurdle that most people can't get over that will make you more successful in these other areas that I'm talking about. In regard to relationships specifically with women or the opposite sex, uh, uh, guys, I would say uh, that social skill set that you're going to learn, so dynamics, this, this arena, that's going to help you when it comes to navigating how to interact with, talk to women for the first time, break the ice, etc., and then how to engage in a successful flirtatious courtship, uh, especially if you're moving towards something like marriage. You want to not show your hand right away. Right. You don't want to be somebody who lays it all out. You want to have an air of mystery. You want to have a little bit of aloofness uh, to where there is a bit of a chase. Right, that The chase is natural. You have to learn the rhythm of that and that, that that's something that's in nature. Right, it's, it, There's always this push-pull going on between men and women in that dynamic. And the sooner that uh, a young guy can reconcile himself to that reality and not get mad at the way nature operates, the way biology operates, the better for him. So I highly recommend figuring that out and learning again, not to focus your time and effort on a woman. If you're a guy, focus your time and effort on your thing, the thing that you do, right? And if that is, if, if, if that's what you're doing, that will attract a woman. So don't do it the other way around where you think, oh, my God, I got to find the woman, I got to find the mate, and then then I'll worry about the job. Then I'll wor worry about, uh, you know, building a future security house, et cetera. It, that's all backwards. So focus on your agenda, your plans, your business, especially if you're in the domain of the church, Christianity, orthodoxy, right? You need to be in a situation where you've got that set. Next up, I, I would say this might sound a little strange, but... Um, it's very important to, if you come into a situation where you're secure, where you are doing well, you need to engage in almsgiving. This is huge in scripture. It's a big part of orthodoxy. I highly recommend that you figure out a way to consistently give alms. It could be to people around you locally. It could be to specific orthodox charities that you know uh, are solid and not scammy or whatever, or you need to just, you know, create, um, uh, care packages and go give them out to the homeless people in your town. I'm not joking. This is very important. In fact, this will help you to be appreciative of, of what you have, and it will re you, it will help you to recognize the reality of what other people are dealing with, and it will help to keep you humble. And it's what we're supposed to do, right? The more that we have, we have it to help other people. So I highly recommend regularly engaging in almsgiving. That's a big, big thing. Um, and most people don't put that on their top 10 ways to self-improve, right? It's odd because, you know, in scripture, that's one of the key ways that God tells us that he will bless us. But in most, you know, uh, secular approaches to this kind of thing, they'll just tell you to do all the things that are going to make you happier and feel better, right? That's not always what this is about. In fact, a lot of self-improvement, this is the next point, is <laughs> really about you conforming to the archetypal image of what you're supposed to be. And that's why I'm going to say that's where God, that's where scripture, that's where the Orthodox Church comes into play, right? So this is not mainly a religious-based video, but the point here is that in my top 10, that's clearly going to be there, right? Um, now, 
again, this, this is not in order. So if this was an order, that would have been number one. But uh, this is just a list that kind of came to me. So uh, you definitely want to move in the direction of finding a traditional Orthodox church. And do as best you can to find out and make sure that they are <laughs> that and not something else. And I would say next, definitely try to figure out what your vices are. Everybody has different vices and different temptations. Um, not everybody is tempted to steal stuff. Not everybody is tempted with, you know, pride and vanity. Um, everybody has different vices and temptations. So if it, when you go into the Orthodox Church and you find a spiritual father, you'll be working with him on how to deal with those passions and those vices. So easy examples, drinking, right? I would highly recommend that you stop drinking, actually. Now, social drinking with your friends is fine, although a lot of people do that all the time, and that's not really good. But, I mean, alcohol is really bad for you, obviously. Um, you're going to put on a lot of weight. You're going to lose a lot of energy that you could be putting into the things that I'm talking about, especially things relating to the business that you might want to start. If you don't drink, do you know how much more of a output you can have in terms of content, in terms of your work and your focus? It'll be two or three times greater than if you were a regular drinker because you're going to be tired, you're going to be you're groggy, you're going to be you know waking up the next day and you don't feel like doing anything. So um, what I found that was most beneficial for me was to just completely quit drinking and it worked stellar for me. Uh, that I did that many years ago. And I, I think that in my case, it really increased my work output, you know, three or four fold. Uh, other vices for you, it could be something like you're spending too much time on video games. You're spending too much time, um, you know, doing this or that, whatever. Uh, and it may not be a sinful thing. It might be something that's just a, a it takes too much uh, of your time or, or it is something that's unhealthy, right? Maybe you are, I don't know, you smoke too much, right? too much tobacco, whatever. So again, start working on not just cutting down vices, but getting them to the point where you can not do them at all if you want to. So next up, of course, is exercise. And exercise is crucial. Uh, you know, back in my 20s when I was obsessed with books, enmeshed in all these books that you see around here, uh, I didn't um, think that exercise was that big of a deal. Or I just kind of forgot about it. But if you're completely focused on one thing, then every you've got blinders and you're not well-rounded. So you definitely want to be in some way every day engaging in consistent forms of vigorous exercise. For the gym, uh, that's up to you. If you want to hike, you want to play basketball, you want to run, whatever, that's your choice. But I highly recommend doing something every day in this regard. And at the same time, I would say, uh, reading is crucial. Like if you were to come to my house, you would notice two different rooms just like this one full of books. Basically, half of the house is a giant library. I was blessed to grow up with a family and others who were bibliophiles, just really into books. So it was always natural to me. That was sort of what I, I the air I breathe. But not everybody is raised with this or thinks this way. So I would recommend uh, cultivating that uh, that attitude, that habit. And don't start with something gigantic. Start with something that you that you would enjoy to read, right? Find something that's a fiction thing that you, you would think would be fun. Uh, maybe you want to start with Michael Crichton. You want to start with War of the Worlds, whatever. But start cultivating the process of reading in things that are fun. And then you can build up to the more serious type of research that I do. And if you do that, you want to start taking notes and, and really remembering the, the content that you're taking in. And for me, it's very helpful to be tactile. I want to I want to write in the book. I want to put notes in the margin. A lot of people don't want to do that. Whatever you want to do is up to you. But for me, that helps imprint it in here. And that's really what matters, right? Putting that information uh, upstairs so that you can have it ready to go. So cultivating uh, the, a habit of reading every day is very important, especially scripture, right? So that, that should be kind of mainly what you want to start reading every day and then branching out from there. Um, you want to be involved in, I would say, limiting your time that you engage with sports ball, uh, with video games, with fantasy football. All of that kind of stuff is synthetic replacement manhood. And it's also uh, a distraction from what really matters. It's a waste of your time. And while those things are fine in themselves, they just become, in our culture, gigantic idols. People throw away all of their time in, in all these things. It saps away all of their energy, right? 
it, it, whether it's UFC or whether it's uh, NFL or NBA or whatever it is, and especially for, for guys that are uh, more intellectual, video games, everybody just uh, plays video games for hours and hours and hours. I put so much of my, of my time when I was younger into video games that, again, looking back, how you spend your time is going to be very important to you as you get older. You, you're going to notice the value of time more and more. And you'll start to think and realize, man, I really should have put a lot of that time into the projects that would be advantageous for me in terms of being an entrepreneur, right? Rather than letting those kinds of things suck away so much of your time. Lastly, I would say your appearance also is very important, especially if you're going to be out there trying to start a business, trying to do things that would uh, project and, and give you power in the world, then your appearance is going to be very important. Now, sometimes you see me on stream, I'm in more of a jokey mood, I'm wearing something ridiculous. That's part of what I do. That's part of me. And I would say that for you, your appearance, it really should reflect who you are, but it should reflect the kind of person that you're trying to be, right? Or the, the who you are that you want to be, right? If you're a slob dude laying around in pajamas right now, that's not what you want to project, even though that might be what you really are right now, right? So you could find your own style, so to speak, and be yourself in a way that your appearance can reflect that, but also at the same time being classy about it, being unique, being, you know, being weird, perhaps. Like for, for, for me, my style is to be, I don't know, James Bond in Miami, right? Don Johnson, Miami Vice. That's, that's just the aesthetic that appealed to me. It really reflects kind of just the weirdness and goofiness of my character. So when I'm out there, if you go meet me at a, at a meetup, a book signing, whatever, I'm going to be dressed appropriate for that setting. That's is another thing that most people in our society don't do. They don't dress appropriate to the settings. They will dress down or they'll dress like children. It's very important that we be mature even in the way that we dress. It uh, doesn't mean that you have to have Gucci or whatever, but if you do want to be you know, snazzy, that's fine as well. I mean, I, I typically do favor something more on the preppy side of things, right? If you were to meet me and hang out with me in public, uh, it's going to be preppy, but also a little bit of weird, right? So, but that's, you know, what you want to do is, is, is up to you. But I would say, try to have appropriate outfits for different settings and always try to dress a little bit better than what most people around you are doing. That's always a, an advantageous thing to do. And because you'll stand out, right? If it's in the workplace, right? It was the old dictum is dress for the job that you want, not the job that you have. That's a good idea, actually. And you will, you will find that if you dress really nice, people will treat you different, especially if you wear sport coat or a suit pretty consistently. People are going to look at you and treat you in a more respectful way. I kid you not. <laughs> it really does happen. So that's why I would definitely recommend working on your appearance. It's not everything, but it does matter. So, you know, that includes things like don't have a bunch of gauges, don't have a bunch of giant face tats everywhere, whatever. Uh, don't have, uh, you know, purple, blue hair, right? Uh, try, you, you can be yourself and be unique without these sort of um, pseudo attempts at getting attention, right? So those are the things I would say. And on top of that, there's also the notion of supplementation which is very important because our diets are nutrient deficient the soils are nutrient depleted so one of the best ways to do that is to go to my show sponsor below chalk.com chok.com go over to chalk and you'll find their supplements that will meet pretty much any of the needs that you have if you're looking for just daily energy boost i would say the action 2.0 is a great product if you're looking for just overall supplementation to your uh, new health-based diet that you have, organic diet, keto diet, carnivore diet, I would say uh, supplement with the daily if you're looking for 100% um, pure organic cold-pressed uh, Tongkat Ali is great for boosting testosterone. It's been proven in studies to actually do that, peer-reviewed studies. Um, there's also Irish moss, there's also Shilajit, great for mental clarity, balancing out hormones in, in terms of uh, women customers, I highly recommend going over to chalk.com right now, chok.com. You want to put in the promo code J50 to get 50% off, J A Y 50, 
50% off all the products that they have, including this excellent chocolate. Jamie loves the chocolate. She drinks it every day. It's, a, it's an excellent superfood to add to your morning smoothie. Tastes like chocolate milk. Uh, and on top of that, there's also recurring subscriptions that you can do where instead of having to put that information in every month, you just put in J53Life and that's the recurring right subscription discount. So they have all those options over there as well as stacks for men or for women. Head on over to chalk.com right now and just start out this process and see if it doesn't work for you. I've been using chalk now for months. Uh, I love it. I would never go to any other product. It's my favorite, hands down. Jamie loves it as well. So as you're working through these, these 10 points here, these top 10 things to improve your life, you definitely also want to improve it with the supplementation that I'm recommending.